And so one of the first questions I'd like to, to throw out to you is, um, you touched on it, Haley. there, was around how can an organisation demonstrate its commitment to ensuring health and safety um, and well-being of their people? I suppose there's that difference between showing that they genuinely care or that it's just lip service. And I was just wondering if you wanted to um, provide a little bit more about what you did there. Thanks, Jo. I think we hear it so much is, is how do we get leadership buy-in? And I think that is critical. We have to have it as a conversation at the executive leadership team table or in the C-suite. How do you do that? I think the challenge in this space is, is often around monetizing and measurement and how do we answer the so what question? Why should we be looking after our people? And I think we've often looked at um, potentially lagging data from an HR space. We'll be looking at absenteeism data, um, would potentially be looking at engagement survey data. But I think we have, we're really starting to move much more into this risk space and a piece of potential advice. And I think something that can drive this space is taking a risk-based approach in the same way that you would do it for physical safety. And I always think about what Wolfgang Seidel says about mental health and physical health. Treat mental health in the same way you would treat a physical absence when somebody comes back in. Don't be scared to talk about it, but let's treat it in the same way. And therefore, it should be in a risk register. Because if we're treating physical safety as a risk to a business, we should be doing the same with mental health and well-being. So I think, I think leaning away from potentially lagging data and using a risk-based approach helps get that C-suite buy-in. But I do think that you need to have it driven from the top, role model from the top, and really integral to, to culture and to the behaviors that you want people to be, to be doing every single day. Um, it's behavior for me. Absolutely. I wonder, Claire, did you see anything different um, to add to that in the other organizations that you worked with? I would say that in many respects, um, what, what Hayley has said, and, and also MCOR UK's approach in, in this respect, does pretty much summarise it, you know, in order, there's a saying that trust takes uh, years to build and seconds to break. And in terms of those, those years of building, it really is about focusing on that integrated approach, you know, mm -hmm. ensuring that health and well-being is truly integrated and not simply cursory. And it's about demonstrating that from senior leaders that health and well-being is a priority. This emerged across organisations, but also making sure that that voice of senior leaders actually gets to everybody in the organisation. Because often it's, and I would say this is something that we did see during the course of, of our research, it's often much easier to reach people in the centre of an organisation you know, within the core professional services function are much harder to reach people who might sit at the outskirts of an organization. So in order to be a truly kind of trusted, you do need to focus on those different groups in the outskirts with your core messages, with your core provision, as well as those at the center. Absolutely. And I think within all of those different groups, that, that role of taking action um, and having that visible action as well to demonstrate the words that you're committing to is so important, isn't it? Making sure that you have that follow through because that will generate the trust. 